I'm Bob Anderson. I'm an orthopedic foot and ankle surgeon in Charlotte, North Carolina. I work at Ortho Carolina. We've been utilizing the syndesmosis tightrope device uh, for about the last 10 years. And uh, we basically use it now for all of our syndesmotic injuries. I have gone away from utilizing screws for the most part, concern about breakage and failure, and having to consider re removal at a later date and when to remove it and how to rehab before and after it. And so for that reason, we've um, enjoyed our experience uh, with the tightrope device for syndesmotic injuries. It allows you to rehab the patient early without that concern for hardware failure or, or symptoms related to hardware. So we use either one or two tightropes depending upon the situation that we're managing. If I have a fracture of the fibula that has a syndesmotic injury as well, what we would oftentimes call Weber C uh, ankle fracture configuration, I'll typically will fix the fracture and then find that one tightrope device through the plate through one of the holes in the plate is adequate. On the other hand, if I'm dealing with a pure ligaments injury, no fracture, no fracture fixation, I always prefer to utilize two tightrope devices. Uh, we typically will place, place those in a divergent fashion at the appropriate level above the ankle joint itself. The 15 millimeters or so of syndesmosis that lies above the ankle joint is actually a true synovial line joint. It's got a function, it actually moves, it rotates. So I like to avoid passing a drill or any kind of device, whether it's a tightrope or a screw, in that first 15 millimeters above the ankle joint. So my first tightrope device will be placed at that level above 15 millimeters so as to avoid uh, iatrogenic injury to that true syndesmotic joint that uh, is to function later on. So again, I'll usually put my first device above that 15 millimeter line and my second device will typically go about another 10 millimeters above that. So we'll typically utilize a buttress plate when we're dealing with a young athletic individual that's going to be going back to contact sport at a relatively early date. Again, the idea of why we use the buttress plate or how the buttress plate is utilized, uh, we're typically doing a situation where we have a pure ligamentous injury, either acute or chronic, it may have gross instability, it may have subtle instability. But we want to go in and use two tightrope devices, pass them through the distal fibula at the appropriate level above the ankle joint. You have to consider, though, that that's a fairly large drill hole going through the distal fibula. If they return to contact activity relatively early, they are set up for a potential stress fracture at that site. So for the last many years, we've been using the concept of a buttress plate. Um, in the situation there is, is there's a syndesmotic buttress plate available that is placed on the distal fibula at the appropriate level. We go ahead and fix it to the fibula utilizing a screw that comes in the kit in the proximal screw hole location as well as the most distal screw hole location. That then leaves two holes in the center of the plate available to place your tightrope devices. So if I'm operating on somebody for a pure ligamentous injury, the high ankle sprain with instability, the syndesmotic injury that may be uh, presenting to us early or late, I'm typically I'm going to use two tightrope devices in that individual. And then my post-operative course will typically be a splint non-weight bearing for two weeks. Then they'll typically go into either a cast or boot, depending upon the compliance of the patient or the degree of instability at the time of tightrope placement. If they had very subtle instability, I might feel very comfortable going into a boot and initiating range of motion. If they had a significant amount of instability, I'll go into a cast for an additional two weeks. I will go non-weight bearing typically for four weeks. Then they'll start partial weight bearing at that time in a boot. By six weeks, they're full weight bearing in a boot. By eight weeks, they're back into some kind of athletic shoe wear. Typically, we try to get them back running by 12 weeks. There are situations where we've gotten people back earlier, but in those that um, have the ability to rehab a little longer, we typically avoid excessive amount of loading activity for about 12 weeks.